Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about five of the most common beliefs that hold you back from reaching your full potential and how to finally break free from that stinking thinking that oftentimes is in the realm called we don't know that we don't know. In other words, we don't even know it's holding us back. We don't even know those shackles are keeping us bound. But what we do know is that there's symptoms of it, symptoms of working longer and harder than we'd like, symptoms of feeling way more stressed out than we'd like, symptoms of having way more fruitless toil than we'd like, symptoms of not enjoying the journey and feeling like it's a grind and feeling like, sure, you may be making money, but are you really enjoying the journey? Are you having fun? Are you embracing and savoring the journey with fun, flow, and fulfillment? If the answer isn't emphatically, hell yeah, then chances are you got some of these shackles that are holding you back and they're causing you to have your wings be tied. They're causing you to not have the juice of life like you could or should be embracing. You know, you have the potential locked up inside of you to step into next level abundance, next level joy, next level peace, next level power. But if you have these beliefs that are in the realm called you don't know that you don't know, then they will be sucking you dry of fulfillment every single day. It may be just a numbing sense that there's something more, that you could be more, you could be achieving more. There might be this sense that you're leaving a ton of money on the table. There, it might be a sense that, man, I'm seeing all these people kicking ass and taking names and chewing bubble gum and living my dream, and yet I'm spinning my wheels in the same old spot. What the heck? What's wrong with me? Why can't I figure this out? It might be a sense that you're banging your head against the wall or just spinning your wheels or feeling like you're in a stagnation rut. It might be just this fear that when is this gravy train going to end? Sure, I make money now, but the fear of the future is stealing the joy in the present. And that sucks because even if you're doing well, if you're not enjoying it, if you're not savoring it, if you're not able to celebrate it because you're afraid, when is this gravy train going to end? Well, who cares then, right? It's like you might as well not even be kicking ass and taking names anyways if you're not enjoying the process and if you're not feeling a sense of certainty that you're able to create more of that success. You know, so it's like, one of the things that I've often said is there's only one thing worse than losing, and that's winning and not knowing why you're winning or winning and having a fear of failure sliding down the mountain because you don't have a system to consistently win with longevity. You don't have a system that gives you total peace of mind and certainty. It's only going to get better. Now, believe it or not, there are roots that create those kind of bitter fruits there are beliefs in the invisible that create those kind of results or lack thereof in the visible. So if we want to change the fruits, we've got to change the roots. If we want to change what's above the ground, we've got to change what's below the ground. So that's why I was inspired to share this topic and really dive into those five most common life stealing, joy stealing, prosperity stealing beliefs that will steal your true potential if we don't shine a light of truth on them. So if anything, we're just going to shine a light. Now, some of these are going to land for you. Some of them won't. Some of them will feel very much in sync with something you struggle with. Some of them won't. Some of them, some of them will resonate with you. Some of them won't. That's cool. But what I want to do is give you a little bit of an MRI scan, if you will, of some of the things that a lot of people in general and mortgage professionals in particular struggle with. So try these on for size and let me know which ones of these you might have in your invisible realm called your belief system that are stealing your true potential. And then I'll share in a moment how we can help to transform those limiting beliefs into empowering beliefs from limiting liabilities into life transforming, life enhancing assets. So let's start with the first one, shall we? First one is I'm not enough. I can tell you from my own experience, this has been one that I've really struggled with. Feeling, you know, the imposter syndrome, 
feeling like a fraud, feeling like, you know, if people knew who I truly was, they wouldn't like me. If they knew who I truly was, I wouldn't fit in. If they knew who I truly was, you know, they wouldn't accept me. So this imposter syndrome, feeling inadequate, feeling not enough is a very human thing. Let's be real. This is something most of us struggle with. Now, where it really starts to impact us is when we go out and start to take new ground in our business, start to make overtures to realtors, for example. You won't notice this limiting belief until you start to get out of your comfort zone, whether it be going to networking events, whether you get on stage and get on the microphone to speak, whether it be on a Zoom call where you're given an opportunity to share your heart or your mind, taking risks become very difficult when you feel inadequate, not enough. Have you noticed, right? If you're anything like me, it scares the shit out of you to make those bold moves out of your comfort zone when you feel inadequate, when you don't feel like you're enough, when you feel like you're not smart enough, you're not good looking enough, you're not charismatic enough, uh, you're not tall enough, you're not short enough, whatever it is, right? When you, when you have this concept of not being enough, it's like this monkey on your back that chases you everywhere. It's this bear that's breathing down your neck 24 seven. And there's lots of different ways we cope, right? We cope by playing it safe and playing it small. We cope by not volunteering our opinions on Zoom calls or in meetings. We cope by not taking the public speaking event or not taking the promotion or, you know, these risks that are offered to us as we go out there in our lives to pursue our goals, there are opportunities to take risk. And here's the thing, there are no reward without risk. There is no reward without risk. We have to risk in order to get to the reward. But when we see that risk, if we don't feel adequate enough, if we feel weak, if we feel like, we're not going to be successful. If we have a concept of self that feels inadequate, we're not going to take that risk. We're not going to have the confidence and we're not going to build the competence to really step out and face that challenge, face that, that risk, because again, our self-concept says, oh, that's not going to go so well. That's not worth trying because that's going to be failure. So that is one of the biggest dream stealers. And I'm here to tell you, God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with you. But until and unless you embrace that truth, you're going to forever have the lie that you're not enough hold you back. And I had that lie hold me back for years. And I wondered why I felt nervous and scared and clammy palmed when I had the opportunity to speak or to go networking. I always felt like I was managing the sense that, man, people are going to discover what I already know about myself that there's something wrong with me. There isn't, something isn't quite right with me. And so I'm constantly coping with this BS presupposition about myself that has me coping where I'm stuttering, where I'm kind of weird and nervous and kind of wigged out. And that will always thwart you if you don't pull that weed out of your garden, that weed will take your garden. It will take your peace. It will pick, take your joy. It'll take your power. It will take your prosperity because rarely in life will your results exceed that which you believe you're capable and worthy of. Have you noticed? Rarely in life will you exceed what you believe you're capable and worthy of. Your results are pretty much a reflection of what you believe you're capable and worthy of. So that is one belief that you definitely want to pull out of your garden. If you feel like that resonates with you, if that lines up for you, if that fits for you, we've got to impeach that belief, that BS lie that you're not enough and just embrace. You're made by greatness for greatness. Embrace the truth that God, the maker of the heavens and the earth, knit you in your mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose. God doesn't make junk, doesn't, doesn't make garbage, and he didn't start with you. When you own that truth that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, when you own that truth that there's nothing wrong with you, you're an image bearer of God. You're a part of God's highest creation, humanity. And sure, we all have faults. We all have areas in our hearts and in our lives where we fall short. That's why 
we need the divine grace and mercy from above to wash over all of our brokenness and to restore us and to have us swimming in our maker's lavish love and favor so that we can be healed. We need that. We need divine grace and mercy. However, if we don't accept the truth that we are whole and complete in that mercy and grace, if we don't accept that we're enough, yes, we have weaknesses, but we also have superpowers. And far too often we focus on our weaknesses instead of focusing on our strengths. You know, one of the things that makes Superman so compelling as a superhero is that he has both weaknesses or rather both strengths and weaknesses. He has his superpowers. He can fly, he can bend iron, right? The man of steel. But then he also has the kryptonite. And we as human beings, we can relate to that. We all have our weaknesses. But I've never seen someone who's uber successful, uber prosperous and fulfilled, happy and joyous, who focuses on their weaknesses. They just don't. What they've found a way to do is to dance in their strengths, operate in their zone of competency, operate in their circle of competency, and then delegate or at least find a way to mitigate their weaknesses. And that's what we need to do as well, is to find a way to double down on our superpowers and our strengths and to delegate or at least mitigate our weaknesses. You are enough. And until and unless I embrace that truth that I'm enough, I'll forever be living in this half-life state, limping along and not being fully alive because I'm coping with a lie that has me be always half full, always pulling punches, always playing it safe and playing it small. That's no way to live. That is not full life. That is not a life that's fulfilled. You know it and I know it. So let's cover the next one. The next belief that will hold you back from your true potential and your fullest potential is succeeding will cost me. So this is kind of the flip side of failure, right? We have a belief in many cases that we can't afford to be fail to fail, that failure will cause, cost us everything. On the flip side of the coin, we also have a fear of going up the mountain, getting the rewards and the recognition and the accolades, and finally achieving success and then going backwards. And the humiliation and the embarrassment of going backwards, or it's gonna cost me in taxes, I'm gonna have to pay more taxes. It's gonna cost me because everyone's gonna want a piece of me. It's gonna cost me because people are gonna like me for my money instead of liking me for who I am. Notice all of those concepts of success with suck, as I say, if you have a concept that success comes with suck, where it's going to cost you your sanity, your health, your well-being, your family, your friends, it's going to cost you in taxes, it's going to cost you in having to work longer and harder than you could or should, all of that will create a concept of success equals suck. And if you have that in your subconscious mind, that success equals suck, what's the likelihood you're ever going to be compelled to attract success? I'm here to tell you slim to none. Why? Because your subconscious mind is what governs your emotional state, your habits, and ultimately your results. And if you have a program that means success equals more work, more pain, more suffering, it will do all in its power to thwart your success because it's trying to protect you from pain, to keep you out of pain and into pleasure. And so that's why it's so important that you have a concept of success that feels elevated, that feels abundant, that feels joyous, that feels compelling, that feels like it's an exquisite dream versus a burden and a nightmare and a hell. So inspect what you expect as it relates to success. Does success feel like a burden to you? Does it feel like a shit ton of work? Does it feel like you're not going to have any time to do anything else but work? Does it feel like you're not going to have any time to take care of yourself because you're just going to be anchored to the office ball and chain? If so, that's going to cost you because what you believe to be true, you're going to manifest. You become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And if you believe that, you're going to make that your truth. That's only one of many truths. But if you choose that as your truth, you're going to attract evidence to make it true for you. You become a self 
fulfilling prophecy. Does that make sense, guys? So that's the second belief that will hold you back from your true potential. The third belief is do it right or don't do it at all. I actually did a coaching session with one of our brokers for our national brokerage, Best Life Mortgage, uh, just recently. And this is one that came up and it's quite a common belief that holds many of us back. And perhaps it's something you can relate to. You Maybe you heard it from your parents. Do it right or don't do it at all, right? Whether that be cleaning up the house or doing dishes. Come on, get with the program. Do it right or don't do it at all. And what that does is it installs a belief that I need to be perfect in order to be accepted and loved. I need to be perfect. Otherwise, there's going to be consequences. The love and the acceptance will be withheld. I'm going to get rebuked if I don't have it just perfect. If I don't get my school grades just perfect, if I don't clean the house just perfect. And so we get this perfectionism installed from our formative years when we get these sayings said to ourselves time and time again when we're kids, it's going right into our subconscious mind. And next thing you know, we're living by this presupposition that I need to do it right or don't do it at all. What that does is it has us playing safe, playing small, and we only do things that we have certainty we're gonna do well at. So we assess out the situation, we look at it to discern, do I have competency here? Is this something that I can do well? Is this something that I have muscle in? Is this something that I can ex execute with excellence? And if the answer isn't emphatically yes, oftentimes we will not do it because it feels like too big of a risk. Because if I take the risk and I fail, well, then I'm going to lose love. I'm going to lose acceptance. I'm going to let myself down. I'm going to let other people down. And so we're afraid of failure, not so much because, you know, we might lose income, although that may be part of it. But we also are afraid of failure because what would people think? I'm going to let people down. I'm going to lose their praise. I'm going to lose their recognition. I'm going to have the humiliation or embarrassment of shame because we're programmed as kids to do it right or don't do it at all. And so this perfectionism has us polishing up our perfect plan, stuck in the parking lot with the emergency brake on, stuck in first gear, half throttle, idling, going nowhere because we're just polishing everything up. We're in paralysis by analysis. And then we wonder why we're not making the calls. We wonder why we're not taking massive action. We wonder why we're afraid of rejection. We wonder why we can't seem to pick up that phone because it feels like it's 50,000 freaking pounds. Like, I can't pick up that phone. What if they say no? Well, we're afraid of, what we're afraid of there is losing people's acceptance and love, not being enough, not being adequate. And it's tied to the previous belief that I talked about earlier about, you know, feeling not enough. So what this does is it feeds our inadequacy. If we don't do it right, it feeds our inadequacy because we're not getting approval from others. We're letting people down. We're losing their love and acceptance. Do you see how, they, how these beliefs, they, they are interconnected? They usually come in you know, doubles or triplets or quadruplets. They come together in a grouping of beliefs versus just one. They come as a family of stinking thinking that has us you know, just fumbling through life with mind trash holding us back. And we don't even realize that it's there because... We presuppose it's true. We don't realize that we're actually collecting evidence to make it true by virtue of believing it. It's like Henry Ford, he said, you, uh, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. That's the power of belief. That's how powerful you are. When you believe something, then you collect evidence to prove it, it to be true. That's how we work as human beings. So that's why it's so important to inspect what you expect and to impeach these limiting beliefs that are holding you back. Let's talk about the next one. The next one, belief number four, is if you want to do it right, do it yourself. Have you heard that? Sound familiar? Or flip it to the I statement. If I want it done right, I need to do it myself, right? Very common belief. And we'll hear this from our parents. We'll hear this from our colleagues. If you don't want it done right, you got to do it yourself. What that installs is the sense that you've got to be the John Wayne of the mortgage industry and you've got to just have the grit 
and you got to have thick skin and you got to grind and you got to do all of it yourself. You got to manage it all yourself. And you've just got to be iron fisted control and you got to be basically a control freak and manage everything yourself. Other, otherwise, if you entrust it to someone else, they're going to drop the ball. It's going to end up being a shit storm, a train wreck. Everything's going to fall apart. And then, of course, it reinforces the belief. If I want it done right, I've got to what? Do it myself. Now, if you own that belief, what happens is, what do you think the likelihood is that you're going to attract top talent that you can trust to be able to have total peace of mind that they're going to manage all the minutia so you can be liberated to focus on rainmaking instead of paper pushing if you have that belief? I'm here to tell you zero. There's zero chance you're going to attract, let alone retain that kind of person if you have a belief that says, if I want it done right, I've got to do it myself. Number one, chances are you're not even going to start recruiting. If you do recruit, you're not going to attract someone who you can trust, who's competent, because you have a belief that says that you can't find someone like that. It's like the Loch Ness Monster. You hear about them, you talk about them, you never see them. Because when you believe this, you're going to think you're chasing unicorns. That kind of person doesn't exist. So because you believe that, like Henry Ford said, whether you believe you can't or you can, you're right. So that presupposition will have you forever burning and churning through talent and frankly, burning and churning through duds and not attracting the studs, burning and churning through the chumps and not attracting the champs. Why? Because whatever you believe is what you manifest. And the last belief that will hold you back from your full potential in this business and in life is this. I never have enough time. Sound familiar? I wish there was more hours in the day. Never seems to be enough time. Don't have enough time. I'm so overwhelmed. Sound familiar? Chances are you can relate to that intimately. And chances are you have colleagues that have that as their daily mantra. Never enough time, never enough time, never enough time. Now, when you say that to yourself, what happens is it's basically like the, you're the captain of a ship and you're telling all of your sailors in the engine room, we don't have enough fuel. So you better conserve energy. So they're like, okay, boss. So they shut everything down to a slow idle to conserve energy. All of a sudden you shut down, you get overwhelmed. You are not resourceful. You're anxious. You don't have, the ability to think on your feet in the way that allows you to really have a clear focus of direction. You will be towed around by the electronic leash. Any bright, shiny object that shows up on your social media, you're going to scroll and waste your time on trivial many instead of the vital few. You're going to allow yourself to get in reactionary mode, taking phone calls, taking emails, taking text messages, and never focus on the vital few of pushing the needle on profit and performance, working on your business instead of in your business, because I never have enough time. So you're constantly in reaction mode, but you're not being productive. You're being busy, but not pr being productive. There's a big difference between activity and productivity. Have you noticed? So this mantra is of I don't, I never have enough becomes again, a self-fulfilling prophecy. I never have enough time and then you're gonna prove yourself right. You're gonna to come to the end of your days being busy but not being productive. You're gonna to come to the end of your days frazzled and fried because you have a mountain of to-dos and you don't really feel like you got anything done. Because let's be real, we get paid on done, not begun, right? So intuitively, you look at your done list and it's not much. You look at your begun list, there's a shit ton that you begun but there's not a whole lot that you actually got done. And that creates a frustration. It creates an anxiety which reaffirms this belief that I never have enough time. And so now that becomes your life. You're forever collecting evidence that I never have enough time. And then that becomes the machine that you're living into. You're a machine that's collecting evidence for I never have enough time. And you can come up with 50,000 references why you never have enough time. And guess why? Because that's how powerful you are. When you believe something, you collect evidence to prove your case. That's how powerful you are. But is that getting you what you want? We can go full-blown Dr. Phil on that bad boy. How's that working for you so far? Chances are not very well, is it? What if instead of 
living that belief out, you live the belief out that I always have enough time for what matters most. What if you take that on as your truth? What if you make that your mantra? I always have enough time for what matters most. Now, all of a sudden, you're prioritizing what matters most. Now, all of a sudden, you're planning your work and you're working your plan. Now, all of a sudden, you're being strategic and you're being proactive instead of reactive. You're driving instead of drifting. You're working on your business instead of in your business. But it starts from the premise of I always have enough time for what matters most. Can you see how that would make a difference? Right? It makes all the difference in the world. When you change your beliefs, you change your life. When you change the root, you change your fruit. When you change your inner world, you change your outer world. There is no movement without, without first creating movement within. Your life and your results is a reflection of your inner world. When you create growth within, you must, by virtue of cause and effect, create growth without. When you create momentum within, you must, by virtue of the law of attraction, create growth without. Your world, your physical world, your bank account, your income, your lifestyle, your sense of peace, power, poise, and prosperity is all an outcropping of your inner world, your inner belief system, your paradigm, your perspective, your habit force, your beliefs. And so if you want to change the visible, you have to change the invisible. If you want to change what's above the ground, you got to change what's below the ground. That means if you want to change the fruits, we must first change the roots. You guys with me on that? That changes the whole game, friends. So if you're listening to this right now, you're like, Dorn, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I feel you on this. But how do I impeach these limiting beliefs? How do I actually get myself out of my own way? How to get this mind trash out of my head and get empowering beliefs that allow me to propel myself into my purpose and propel me into prosperity? How do I get myself heart aligned with my dreams so I'm no longer getting in my own way and self-sabotaging myself? These are very good questions. And frankly, that's one of the big reasons why people hire us. They hire us at MortgageMarketingCoach.com to give them the proven system, both in terms of the technology the mechanics, the strategy, the words that work, the campaigns, the proven formula, but also the system to be able to get people empowered, to get you empowered every single day to bring the best version of yourself so that when you start your day, you're ready to kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum and crush it. When you start your day, you are powered up, not powered down. When you start your day, you put your cape on, you roll your shoulders back, and the champion version of yourself is ready to show up and shine. When you feel good, you tend to do good, but there's a formula for feeling good. There's a formula for being empowered, both in your marketing, but also in your mindset. And it doesn't matter how many tools we put in your toolbox. If you got a leaky toolbox, we got a problem, right? So that's why you need to have not just marketing, kick-ass marketing at play, you need a kick-ass mindset at play because the mindset is what empowers the marketing. Unfortunately, most of the coaching programs out there not only give you substandard marketing, getting to do cold, you know, cold calling and old school methods from the dark ages, cold calling the same, same 40 realtors every freaking Monday, that's definitely doing it the hard way. But then they also don't get you growing in your inner man or inner, inner woman. They don't get you stepping into the best version of yourself. They don't get you anchoring into champion level habits that help you create champion level results. They don't get you anchored to your champion self, your winner self. And instead what happens is you're constantly still coping with these limiting beliefs and your wings are still tied and you wonder why you can't soar. Well, again, until and unless you change the roots, you're not gonna change the fruits. That's why we bring the complete holistic solution to help you not only have kick-ass world-class marketing, but also to have your best version of yourself showing up every day. So you're powered up, you're tuned in, you're turned on, and you're ready to show up and shine every day. And the reason why we're, we're unique in that respect is because we are a personal development company. We understand you are in the personal development business. Your business is a personal growth course with a compensation plan attached. And until and unless you get that, chances are you're going to have skinny kids or you're going to have a very skimpy, skimpy level of joy, peace, power, flow, fun, and fulfillment. You're going to always be chasing that elusive butterfly. 
It's always going to be out there. You try and get to 50K, you get to 50K, and you're like, man, I'm still missing something. You get to 100K, you're like, man, I did it. And you're like, man, is that all this is? Really? Maybe there's more juice at 200K. You get to 200K, oh, man, is this all there is? You're like, maybe there's more juice if I get a half a million. You get to half a million, you're like, man, I was more fun when I was making 50K. What's going on? Sure, I got more funds. Sure, I got more toys in the garage, but I'm not any more fulfilled. What the hell is going on in my life? I got all this income, but then I also have all these bills and I have all the stress. So just making more income is not going to give you your best life. What gets you your best life is to be able to lock into a formula, a rhythm, a routine, a recipe that allows you to step into the best version of yourself and to unleash kick-ass marketing, but also to be able to have the best version of yourself show up so that you make the main things the main things. So you're not only making great income, but you have a great lifestyle. You not only have a fit bank account, but you have a fit body. You not only have a juicy, exciting, adventurous, five-star vacation repertoire where you can go away and have adventures and leave the, you know, being able to do that five-star first class and not even skip a beat financially, but you also have a juicy marriage or, you know, a juicy and fulfilled and passionate and sparkly connection with your significant other. You see, there's got to be more to life than just trying to stack money without having fulfillment. So if you're listening to this right now and you're like, Dorn, I feel you, man. And I've been there. I've been on this guinea pig wheel. In fact, I'm on that guinea pig wheel, guinea pig wheel right now. And I know I'm missing something. I need a coach in my corner to help me. I need someone to kick my ass to get me moving in the right direction. I need the accountability. I need to know what to do to unleash my full potential. I just need a formula, a plan, paint by the numbers, A to Z, step by step. Show me the way. Because if you're just meandering in the wilderness unarmed and naked, it ain't going to go so well, right? You know it and I know it. Some of you, you've been doing that and you wonder why it's not working. If you're heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, it ain't going to go so well. It doesn't matter how ambitious you are, how hardworking you are, you're going to get bludgeoned. It doesn't matter how optimistic you are. If you're heading east looking for the sunset, we got a freaking problem. And so we need more than just optimism. We need more than just hard work. We need more than just talent. We need the right strategy and we need the right habits. So if you're listening to this right now, and you are like, man, I'm ready to step up. I'm ready to step up into my full potential. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of getting my ass kicked. I'm ready to ignite and step into the best version of myself and to step into my best life. And I'm ready to start making more money, having more fun with more fun flow and fulfillment. I'm ready to start earning more while working less. I'm ready to embrace the journey and love the journey and create magic moments now, not just be striving for the elusive butterfly of the someday. Someday, if I hit X, Y, Z, then I'll be happy. Someday, when I get to this result, then I'll be happy. Screw freaking that. Life is too short to live like that. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is a one-shot deal. So let's make the most of it now. And if you're sick and tired of feeling like you're leaving a lot of juice on the table, a lot of money on the table, spinning your wheels in the same spot in stagnation prison, and you're ready to step up and finally break free. I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business and we look at what's working, what's not working. Where are you at now? Where do you want to be? And if we can help you bridge that gap and take you from where you are to where you want to be, I'll show you what that looks like. And or one of my consultants will show you what that looks like. If not, Frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, my friend, my goal for you is that you leave this call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we'll have some fun as well. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book a call. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. We'll have a real talk conversation, just an honest conversation about what you really want to create and manifest in your life. And if we can help you, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Fair enough. If that sounds cool to you, go ahead and book a call. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. 
Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. This is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We just talked about the five beliefs, the top five most common beliefs that hold people back from their greatness, from their full potential, and from their dreams, and most importantly, how to fix it. So if you guys want to get elite level coaching to produce elite level results and to be able to unleash your full potential, go ahead and book a call. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me. We'll talk again soon. Peace.